The Godfather is full of iconic scenes that are layered with subtle details and hidden meanings, and these are easily missed on first viewing. This is why, even 50 years after its release, it's still extremely rewatchable, and still referenced in film and television. In this video we'll be looking at 10 iconic scenes, the insane details in them, the hidden meanings behind them, and the pop culture references to them. Let's get into it. Iconic Scene 1. The Opening Scene. The opening scene is iconic in that it sets the tone and atmosphere of The Godfather right from the start. The dimly lit room and Bonacera's emotional plea establish a dark and solemn atmosphere that permeates the entire film. But, let's talk about the cat. The cat Vito is infamously petting throughout the scene wasn't in the original screenplay. It was a stray that Coppola found on the studio lot and added to the scene. The cat's just a small detail, but it's a symbolic one. The cat adds a human dimension to Vito, establishing he has a gentle and loving side. However, because cats have a long, and in my opinion, undeserved, association with villains, it also establishes Vito has a dark side too. Okay, moving on. Small details like the cat add to Vito's complexity, making him one of the most legendary film characters of all time. Believe it or not, the opening scene of The Godfather was parroted in Rugrats in Paris. Strange reference for a kid's film, huh? Iconic scene 2. The horse's head. Jack Waltz gets on the wrong side of the Corleone family and as a result wakes up to a horse's head. The scene demonstrates not only the extent of the Corleone family's power, but also their willingness to use violence to achieve their goals. The scene is supposed to be shocking, which is why Coppola needed it to be realistic. Unfortunately, he did not think that the prop head that was prepared looked real enough. So, instead of the prop, an actual horse's head was obtained from a local dog food company. Ah! This insane attention to detail is what makes the scene so horrific, and by extension so memorable. This scene has been referenced countless times on TV, including a great shot-for-shot -shot parody in Modern Family, and also in film, recently including Crazy Rich Asians. Iconic Scene 3. Luca Brasi's Death. Luca Brasi, Vito's violent enforcer, was feared among the New York crime families. His iconic death scene highlights the vulnerability of even the most fearsome individuals within the criminal underworld, and foreshadows the danger faced by other characters in the story. The scene was a major influence for George Lucas, a longtime friend of Coppola, when he shot Jabba the Hutt's death in Return of the Jedi. Following Luca's death, Sonny receives a message. That means Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. But before Luca is actually murdered, there's an insane detail that foretells his fate. Let's go back and watch Luca enter the bar again. This time look at the glass. Yeesh, he sleeps with the fishes. Since The Godfather, the phrase sleeps with the fishes has become common slang for killing someone and disposing of their body, and has been referenced and parroted in many films, cartoons, and TV shows, most famously The Simpsons and The Sopranos. Louis Brazzi sleeps with the fishes. Luca Brazzi. Iconic scene 4. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Throughout The Godfather, food holds subtle but symbolic significance. For example, at the very beginning of the film, the lavish feast at the wedding reception in post-war America immediately establishes that the Corleone family are wealthy and powerful. However, the most iconic reference to food is when Clemenza famously tells Lamponi to Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. This short but memorable line is extremely significant. It encapsulates the intersection of everyday life and criminal life in the world of the Corleone family. The contrast between the seriousness of leaving the gun and the casualness of taking the cannoli creates a powerful but also kinda humorous juxtaposition. This entire scene was parroted perfectly just a few years ago in Family Guy. Leave the gun. Take the cream soda. Iconic Scene 5. Michael kills Salazzo and McCluskey. This scene is iconic because it marks not only a turning point in the film but also in Michael's character arc. Up until this scene, Michael is portrayed as the innocent outsider to the family's criminal activities. His decision to take action and eliminate Salazzo and McCluskey signals the beginning of his transformation from a reluctant participant to the powerful head of the family. The violence in this scene is extremely graphic and realistic, especially the gunshot wound in McCluskey's head. This effect was achieved through a prosthetic forehead. It was filled with fake blood, and at the right moment, a plug was yanked out by the production team using fishing wire creating the effect you see in the scene. This is just another small detail that makes the violence ultra-realistic and memorable. This scene was parroted in the classic 90s action spoof Hot Shots Part 2. It's actually one of the more subtle references in the film, blink and you'll miss it. Iconic Scene 6. 
Sonny's murder. Sonny is the eldest son of Vito and one of the central characters of the film, so his violent murder had to have a lasting impact on the audience, which doesn't come cheap. The scene was the most expensive to shoot in the entire film. It cost 100,000 US dollars, which was a substantial portion of the budget in 1971. There is a small detail that stands out in this scene, which is when one of the assassins brutally kicks Sonny in the face after he's clearly dead. Even in the context of a gratuitously violent film like The Godfather, this kick stands out as particularly brutal. There are mixed opinions on the significance of this kick. Some fans think the kick was just a sign of disrespect to Sonny, while others think the kick could be a subtle reference to Carlo. Earlier in the film, when Sonny beats Carlo for abusing Connie, he gives Carlo one last kick even when it's clear he's unconscious. Was the kick in Sonny's face payback, or a hint to the audience to tell us who set Sonny up? Perhaps. This scene was parroted perfectly in The Simpsons, even including one final snowball in Bart's face after he hits the deck. Iconic Scene 7. Vito's Death. Vito is a complex character who embodies power, wisdom, and honor. As such, his death is a powerful and emotional moment. Shortly before he dies, he peels an orange and uses it to make faces at his grandson. This may seem like a small and insignificant detail, but this isn't the first time oranges appear in the film before something terrible happens. Oranges appear prominently in several iconic scenes, usually signaling forthcoming death or danger. For example, there are oranges at Waltz's dinner table before the horse's head appears in his bed. Vito is buying oranges when he is shot, and when he falls the oranges scatter into the street. According to the set designer, the oranges were simply used to add some much-needed color to otherwise dreary scenes. In other words, any symbolism was purely coincidental. However, since The Godfather, the oranges of death have become a recurring trope in TV and film, influencing scenes in Breaking Bad, Lost, Point Break, and The Sopranos, among others. Iconic Scene 8. The Baptism. The Baptism is one of the most iconic movie scenes of all time. The scene cuts between Michael at his nephew's baptism, and his henchmen carrying out a series of brutal assassinations. In this scene it becomes clear that the metamorphosis of Michael is complete. He has evolved from a war hero and reluctant outsider in his family's criminal empire, to a ruthless mob boss who will stop at nothing to protect his interests. The juxtaposition of the baptism and the murders is a powerful visual representation of Michael's transformation, and highlights the duality of his character. This scene was parroted to great effect in Modern Family. I do renounce them. It also served as a major reference for the Order 66 scene in Revenge of the Sith. This scene cuts between Palpatine declaring himself as Emperor in front of the Galactic Senate, and a brutal galaxy-wide massacre of Jedis. Iconic Scene 9. Michael confronts Carlo. This scene exposes the depths of Carlo's betrayal and highlights the consequences he will face for his actions. The lighting in this scene is perfect. Notice that Michael's face is shown half in shadow and half in light. This small detail symbolizes that he's hiding something. Don't be afraid, Carl. Come on, you think I make my sister a widow? And we all know what happens to Carlo. <laughs> the Godfather is widely regarded as a masterclass in lighting and shadow. They are used throughout the film to subtly show the emotion of characters. For example, in the opening scene, Vito is sitting in a dark, shadowy room, which symbolizes how the Mafia operates in secrecy and darkness. When Michael is in Sicily, he's often shown in shadow, indicating that he's in hiding and in danger. Take a look at this shot. Notice that Carlo is in full light, he's not hiding anything, but Fabrizio is in shadow like Michael. Maybe he's hiding something too? Iconic Scene 10 Behind Closed Doors The film uses doors and doorways to create tension and signify relationships and power dynamics. Many key scenes are framed through the use of doors, but perhaps the most famous is the final scene. Michael lies to Kay, before being greeted as Don Corleone by his capos. Kay sees this and realizes that he's lying. This door represents the separation between Michael and Kay, as well as the secrecy and isolation necessary for him to maintain his power as the new Don of the family. Doors are so significant in The Godfather, that the last thing we see in the film is a door being closed on Kay. This iconic shot has been parroted in The Simpsons, Modern Family, The Office, and perhaps most famously, Seinfeld. That's all for this video, let us know your favorite scene from The Godfather in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe, we'll see you in the next one.